Strong synthesis is a method of physical modeling using audio rate delay and assured excitation of noise on the input. This is a really great technique for string percussive sounds, and since the DLD has a one volt proactive tracking, we can easily get some great melodies happening without having to do too much work or trying to find the correct pitch. Um, this does also have a quantized pitch using the time um, if you don't have one volt proactive tracking. So you have the best of both words there. So the first thing we want to do is patch in a square wave into the ping input here, which I already have set up. That's indicated by the light blinking here. And to run through some knob positions, just to, to kind of have a good foundation here, you want your time to be all the way to the left, that being your fastest delay time. Make sure this is on eighth note. Your feedback could be somewhere in between. Um, the feedback is basically your decay once we get this started, so somewhere in the middle is great. Your delay feed um, could could be all the way to the right. Oh, I think it sounds good there. The further right you go, a bit more resonance happens, so you could leave that somewhere in between. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's more of a preference thing, and we'll we'll see what that sounds like when we get there. Um, and your mix knob is going to be fully wet all the way to the right. And that's your basic setup there to get started. So the next step we're going to need to take is we're going to have to take some white noise. It could be any type of noise. It doesn't have to be white noise, um, but you will find using different noise sources, pink noise, brown noise, digital noise, white noise, you will get a bit of a different tonality um, in the sound that you're creating. So that's something to keep in mind going forward. Um, if you do try this on your own, you could try different noise sources. It's it's a pretty good way to, to see the differences there. But in this case, we're going to use white noise. PCA, with a super quick decay envelope, um, really snappy, really fast. So let's get that patched in so we could start to hear what this would sound like. Classic sound, really nice. Take your feedback, you can hear the decay time. Super, super tight. Slowly turn it to the right and start opening that up. As I was saying before, your delay feed time, if I give this a little juice here, if I turn this all the way to the right, you'll hear a slight variation. If I bring it back down, So that's, that's a really good starting point to have. And obviously, as I said before, you could do a lot of things with changing the noise source. You could even extend the envelope a little longer, get some different results. So that's, that's a good foundation to, to start honing things and, and playing around and seeing you know, what you like, what you don't like. Um, but this will at least get you into that, that realm um, of having a good foundation. So now that we have this all happening, we could take some one volt per octave and we could patch that into time A. So now when that happens, hold the hold button down and you give a little flick of the time, bring it back down. 
And here we are in unquantized mode, um, which is the mode you will want to use when you're using one bolt per octave tracking. So now that we have that happening, um, another thing we could do is we could take our feedback, turn that all the way down, and we can use the send and return here to come in and out of a filter. When we do that, we'll again get another variety of tone by using the, um, the filter cutoff to act as your decay time, um, which is a great little trick. So let's get that patched in. So now I'm opening up the, the cutoff here. It gives it more of like a, a tubular kind of sound. So let's take that back out for a second and go back to our stock sound. And you can see they're quite different. So another thing we could do here is we could take some modulation. Stick it in feedback A and modulate that to K time. Gives us a sense of dynamics. I'm just using a random source right now. With all that said, um, that's a good foundation. Those are some good ideas to start exploring this technique. You could do duophonics, so you could, you know, take side B and have another white noise source, another rhythm, another melody. You could have them in harmony. You could kind of do some octave shifting and polyphonic rhythms going back and forth. There's a lot of things you could do just with this alone. Um, but for now, that, that should give you a good idea of how to do this. Um, so another thing I do like to do, I'm gonna turn this down for a second. Let's take that out. And we're gonna throw in a drum loop.
start to increase that feedback. Modulation going and the pitch going in there. I think we have our initial setup. I think you have some good ideas to go off of to experiment on your own. And we're going to move to another section where we're going to start utilizing side B for some loops along with the Listen I.O. The Listen I.O., super simple module, really clean, perfect for the things I like to do. Um, this allows you to bring in outside sources into the modular and vice versa. So in the next example, we're going to move over to side B and I will be using a microphone to record live sounds, organic sounds, um, in my case, singing bowls or gongs and chimes and various things. And we're going to bring them in and start looping those to create some textures and some sounds on side B. Um, so we're going to shoot over to the next segment and then we'll take a walk through through that. So in this section, we're going to take a look at using side B as a looper. Um, on this, we could change the time to be half time or double time of the car plus strong signal. I'll show you how to do that. I'll walk you through just the basic functions of the looper as uh, 4MS has some like three amazing videos that pretty much go through every detail of the looper. Um, so I'm not going to waste too much of your time by talking and, and walking you through every aspect of that. I'd rather just give you the contrast of having some car plus strong on one side and we could experiment a little with the looper. Um, I haven't seen too many people use external sources with this yet, at least on a video. Um, so good folks at 4MS got me a listen IO. This will allow us to pipe in line instruments from a mixer or from, you know, a guitar or a keyboard or in this case, a microphone. Um, which I'm just going to sit off to the side so we can record some external instruments. I'm going to use some of my favorite weapons of choice, which will be percussion or, you know, singing bowls, gongs, things of that nature, bells. So let's take a little trip, um, see what happens, because as we layer loops, I kind of just go on the fly, um, real subtle, real gentle for this, and just kind of let it do its thing. And as we layer things, you'll see new things are created on its own, you know, new rhythms start emerging from the bowls bouncing off of each other and the different vibrations and the wavelengths. So a lot of interesting things can happen. Um, and that's kind of how I like to work with this and let it just be a creative tool that kind of takes me somewhere that maybe, you know, I didn't intend on from the beginning. I am all modular is like that, but in this case, I really think, um, the DLD is a, is a really useful tool for kind of expanding creativity and taking you to some different places that maybe you didn't intend to from the start. With that said, let's turn down the main loop here. So your basic stuff here for the looper, your mix knob is going to be basically to the right, all the way to the right will be your recorded signal. All the way to the left will be your live signal. Um, you keep it in the middle, you can kind of monitor both. Um, it's a great way to do that. Your feedback is going to be set at 100. And your delay feed basically becomes your, your volume or your attenuation going into the recording mode. So as soon as you increase that, you're live, you're recording, you take it down, 
and obviously you're not recording that signal anymore. So the cool thing about that is you could do volume swells. You know, you could you could automate that. You could jump in here and do it yourself. So that's very cool. Um, kind of love that feature. So before we touch the time knob here, we want to lock in what we have. So in order to lock that into side A, you just hold the hold button, hit ping, and that's going to lock it in. So now when you change the time here, it's not going to affect the time on side A. That's, that's pretty key. So, you know, for side B, I'm going to go a little slower. And you can play with the divisions. And you'll see the blue light is your indicating for time. So the first thing we're going to do is create maybe a little bit of texture with some kind of percussive stuff here. So I'm going to increase my volume. I got my mic live. I'm going to increase this a little bit, not too loud, because I don't want this to wind up being, you know, uh, too up front in the mix. We'll just start it off soft. If we need to increase it, we could do another layer. So now we have some kind of cool, interesting, crunchy layer happening, very subtle. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to hit one of our singing bowls with a, a soft mallet just to get a, a lower fundamental. sit with this stuff for a minute and kind of get into the zone. So now I'm going to take a, a harder mallet um, to bring out some of the higher overtones of the singing bowl. Let's put that in there and see what happens. So we have a nice little pattern going on there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a larger singing bowl. I'm going to do the same thing with that. Start creating some layers. Hit it with the harder mallet. Sit with that for a minute to kind of catch the vibe of what's happening here. Kind of like where that's going. So 
And now, maybe I'm going to throw in a little higher pitch with a bell here. I have this beautiful uh, nickel silver bell. I'm going to watch the volume on this one because it could be a little loud. Let's listen to that by itself. I think we could add some more to that. Or in the moment, let's say you wanted to keep that. All you have to do there is hit the hold button and you're locked in. Once the hold button's engaged, you could you could go through the time, you could make it faster, change the, the start and end points. That's kind of cool actually, it just starts creating its own new rhythms by, by obviously fiddling with the start and end points. So maybe now that we have some organic instruments going in here, we're gonna take this out. And let's bring in the 4MS Spherical Wave Table Navigator, which is one beast of a module. Absolutely love this module. And I'm going to start off with some low-end drones. So we're going to take it off hold. And we're going to bring these in subtly with the volume here, with the delay feed in this case. This works really well when you start kind of lightly layering things. Obviously, you could hear here, nothing is extremely loud, and I'm kind of controlling the volume so it's subtle. Um, I'd rather it all start gelling and blending together and adding things louder and louder if I feel that's necessary, if I feel I want to hear something louder. But I kind of like it to, to become its own beast, um, and that's what's starting to happen now. You could hear between the, the two bowls and the bell, and changing the time, we've created some kind of, kind of really interesting little rhythm happening. So maybe we'll we'll bring in some higher pitches here. I'm just kind of going in real quick on the volume, bringing it back down just to create kind of swells, some dynamics. And again, by doing that, we've created kind of another layer of rhythm on top of what we had with the bowls on the bow. So I'm going to lock that in. I like that.
So what we can do now, if we would like, we could patch in a little random modulation here into the reverse input for B. sounds like something completely different than, than where we started from. Let's bring the beat back a little bit. Obviously, you could choke the feedback a bit, get it nice and tight, and then bring it back in, get it more resonant. So I hope this little demonstration of different ways you can use the DLD by bringing in organic external sounds opens up some inspiration for you in bringing them into modular. It opens up a whole other world of possibility. You could maybe take it, bring the sound in, take it out from the listen IO into a bunch of different stuff and then back into the looper through reverbs, effects, or filters, or whatever you feel. Um, so there is really limitless like all things modular, um, it's really just open for you to explore. So I hope this video on exploring the DLD in some different ways has given you a little bit of a taste of the things you can do with it um, that maybe you don't see too often and it helps you to dive in. And if you don't have one, maybe it'll make you get one. I hope it does because I absolutely love this module and the Listen I.O. with it. Um, it's, it's really a beautiful combo. and. Just to mention, all this is being chained through the Listen Four Quarters, which is an awesome mixer and output module with a headphone jack. Um, so it's kind of everything I need there. Um, so there you go. There's your little 4MS section here. I mean, even if you have a small case and you just kind of combine all those modules, you could do a whole lot with that. There's a lot of great info out there. There's a lot of videos. Um, to give you the finer details of the looping if you'd like to explore those. And the manual is so well laid out for the 4MS stuff, so you could just dig into the manual on the website. I'll post links below in the video um, to get you over to those things. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop a line. Hit me up on Instagram, YouTube. I'll put the links below. I hope you enjoyed.